This LOS is analyzed disclosures relating to deferred tax items and the effective tax rate reconciliation and explain how information included in these disclosures affects a company's financial statements and financial ratios. Presentation and disclosure. So the things that need to be analyzed with regards to um, deferred taxes are the deferred tax liabilities and assets, any valuation allowance, and net change in the valuation allowance, unrecognized deferred tax liability for undistributed earnings of subsidiaries and joint ventures, current year tax effect of each type of temporary difference, components of the income tax expense, tax loss carry forwards and credits, and reconciliation of difference between income tax expense as a percentage of pre-tax and the statutory rate. Continuing with presentation and disclosure, be aware of differences in tax reconciliation between periods. Consider the firm's growth rate and capital spending levels when determining whether temporary differences due to accelerated depreciation will reverse. Look for accumulative differences due to asset impairments and post-retirement benefits. Restructuring charges can create a deferred tax asset. When differences are expected to reverse and result in future tax payments, treat deferred tax liability as debt in calculating leverage ratios. So that's an interesting one. When differences are not expected to reverse and result in future tax payments, treat deferred tax liability as equity in calculating leverage ratios. And we've seen that before when a deferred tax liability can be treated as equity when they're not expected to reverse, okay? And when the amount and timing of the future tax payments from reversal is uncertain, exclude from both debt and equity. So when you're making these adjustments, uh, you know, treating the deferred tax liability as equity or excluding from both debt and equity, that of course is gonna have an impact on the various financial ratios. And that's the last slide for this LOS, thank you.